Hello, good morning, and welcome to Autonomous Cars with Mark Hogue. The number one result on, ah, uh, never mind, you, you know all this already. What you may not know, however, is that today is the one year anniversary of this show, thanks to everybody like you. And so we're doing something a bit special, a bit different. We are reviewing this. This, of course, is a Tesla Model 3 performance package, which means it's very, very good at redistributing the fat on your face. I know because I've tried and it hurts. And of course it has Tesla's enhanced autopilot with Navigate on autopilot. We're gonna see what it's capable of. All right, so you probably know all about this car by now, but just a quick refresher, obviously 3.3 seconds to 60, something like 310 miles of range, theoretically at max anyway real world, more like 280, um, 155 miles per hour, if you're lucky enough to be driving on de-restricted sections of Autobahn. There is, however, just one small problem. This is um, decidedly not the Autobahn in Germany. What we are, however, is here in this, the idyllic bedroom community just north of San Francisco, Tiburon in Marin County. An incredibly idyllic place to test just about anything, like this Tesla, or, that boat or even some incredible ice cream on the smallest main street in America. Now, it's not like there's any shortage of racetracks here in California. Obviously, we are rather blessed with racetracks. We've got Sears Point and Finian. Sonoma Raceway, whatever it's called these days, obviously the world famous Laguna Seca, Thunder Hill, Button Willow, two tracks where I did a few track days myself. Um, no, we're not here to demonstrate the face distorting effects of this car. So there's plenty of videos on the YouTubes for that. No, what we're here for today is a road trip. What we're gonna do is take this across that through the city of San Francisco into Palo Alto, the epicenter of Silicon Valley, where lots of people are sitting in front of their MacBooks all day long trying to change the world. Right, enough talk. Let's get started on our road trip. And I can think of no better way to get started than by testing autopilot with a roundabout. I genuinely, sincerely have no idea how this is gonna go because I've never tried it in my life. I haven't read anything about it on the interweb, so let's get going, get started and be on our way. And we're off. So I'm gonna see if I can engage autopilot, but as you can see on the screen here, uh, actually it looks like autopilot's not even, indeed, we can't actually use autopilot here. So we may not, oh, there we go. Oop, it was on first, Oop, nope. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Whoop, slow down, there we go. All right, so autopilot's on. Let's slow down a bit further. Here comes the traffic circle, and I'm ready to brake and to turn, and the answer is, whoop, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so then, I think we just answered the question for ourselves. Autopilot does not, in fact, work in a roundabout. Yep, so here we are, the smallest main street in America. That is a beautiful Alfa Romeo Quattro Formaggio. Tiburon Boulevard now going to engage autopilot because it's sort of a no-brainer here and off we go. So here we are on a whoop, here we are on a pretty twisty bit of road and autopilot having a little bit of uncertainty, especially going through an intersection back there. But by and large, here we are doing 43. Um, as I say, a bit twisty this road here, and yeah, we'll discuss this a bit more later on, I'm sure, but really my biggest issue is it's certainly able to do it, but I wouldn't describe it as really that capable. I mean, it, it really feels sort of like a beginner driver. Uh, the inputs are a bit sort of abrupt. There goes a Model X. Um, 
it's not unusual that I'll be at a stoplight next to at least one, if not two other Tesla Model 3s, many of which are actually white, weirdly. I've only seen a few other cars. This is a weird bit of road here, and there it goes, and it failed. I had to take over, as you see. That's a really tricky intersection. It's a pretty sharp turn, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Here we are now on the 101 South Freeway, just uh, heading south towards the Golden Gate Bridge uh, from here in Marin County. What I'm going to do is punch in navigation into the, into the uh, I was going to say the flight computer, uh, the driving computer. Uh, so here we go. Let's activate autopilot first because of course. So I'm just going to toggle the switch obviously twice. Now of course you can see the autopilot icon is active and of course hands off the wheel. So let's see, navigate. I'm just gonna punch in, say, Palo Alto. So, actually, you know what? Forget that, let me do it a little bit more efficiently. Watch this. Navigate to Palo Alto, please. Yes, there she goes. Drive southeast on US 101 South, California 1 South for 4.1 miles. Okay, thank you for that. So now what we're gonna do, though, is obviously turn on Navigate on Autopilot, which is very cool because Okay, so now you can see over here on the left, we've got these lane markings. I've also gone ahead and turned on the Mad Max mode, which essentially is supposed to help, well, switch you from lane to lane to get around slower traffic. And for those of you who don't know the area, talk about light at the end of the tunnel. There's the Golden Gate Bridge in all her glory with San Francisco on an astonishingly clear day. And of course, autopilot now beeping madly at me because I ignored her uh, demands to touch the wheel. So confirm lane change into faster lane. So this is pretty cool. So you can see here this. So I'm gonna indicate left lane and now the car is gonna start switching to the left on its own. And here we are now in the quicker lane. Here's an interesting bit where the lanes kind of get really wide as a few come together. And as you can see, the car does a perfectly good job. I'm gonna turn the temperature down a bit. This is my one gripe actually about the, the UX here, it's um, it's really hard to fiddle with the thermostat and turn it down. I think there's a way to do it from the steering wheel knobs. I'm not sure though, anyway. Um, but yeah, one really cool thing I noticed about this lane change suggestion indicator. So if you're in the left lane uh, for too long of a period of time, it'll actually uh, recommend to you to change out of what it calls the passing lane. It doesn't want you sitting in that left lane. Okay, now in this case, Navigate on Autopilot has actually terminated because it seems that going through the toll booth, uh, she won't do her thing. As far as I know, I do need to take over here. So we're gonna cancel Autopilot completely as we kind of squeeze through the toll booth here. Now take exit 438 on the right. And there she goes, look at that. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything at all. All right, so we have just gotten off the freeway. For those of you who know this part of San Francisco, uh, this is technically still the freeway, but obviously it's, it's not. So we're gonna go ahead and engage autopilot now because again, on 19th Avenue here in San Francisco, really, if there's any place in the world you want autopilot, this is surely it. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and engage it now. All right, so it's set to uh, 40, which will obviously never happen on this road. Um, but the nice thing is, at this point on, pretty much for the next 25 minutes until we get back to the, the 280 South Freeway, um, yeah, there's not really anything to do. And just like that, you'll notice I don't have to do anything at all. This is actually a really big deal because for those of you who've experienced um, Mercedes uh, Distronic Plus with, with Lane Keep Assist, you generally have to re-engage the system after you've, okay, okay, whoa, oh no. And I've broken it. Yep, I've actually managed to break it. That was really, really interesting. Um, let me put it in park and see if I can reset it. Then I'll tell you what I think just happened. So we're in park. Okay, we're in drive. This is weird. Um, I actually just saw a video on YouTube 
somebody else had a similar thing they happened to capture on camera, which is I think exactly what we just saw. Autopilot seems to have completely crashed. I can't even, oh, it's back. My point is that wasn't simply an example of autopilot disengaging on its own because I forgot to touch the wheel. Um, because if you noticed, the emergency light started flashing as well. I think that was an example of the autopilot system crashing and effectively rebooting. Uh, that said, it is active again now, so, oops, this has a red light camera, so we're going to slam on the brakes. Yeah. Speaking of which, that is definitely the next big thing for autopilot. Stoplight detection. Because that, yeah, that shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. This is pretty neat because, I mean, it's a pretty twisty bit of road, and you can see, I'm not touching the wheels, it's doing a pretty good job, actually. Um, this is actually a really good time to discuss what I think is one of the biggest areas of improvement for autopilot. How are we going to do here? That's not going to work. I was about to explain how one of the limitations of autopilot is the fact that um, it is actually fairly competent, if a bit uncertain. Um, interestingly, the gas and brake inputs are actually really quite smooth. Um, it's the steering that's a bit off. And when I say off, what I mean is cutting corners, right? You, you, you've, got a, you've got a road, it's got a bend in it. And obviously, if you take the geometrically straightest line through the bend, well, it makes for a smoother overall drive. But even within a lane, even on a single lane road, you can use the entirety, the entire width of that lane to really smooth out the bends. Um, yeah, autopilot not so good at doing that yet. So you got a, you get a lot of sort of um, incremental step change inputs instead of a perfectly smooth circle, say, or a perfectly smooth arc. Uh, you end up with kind of a kind of a finite set of steps as the car tries to negotiate the turn, rather than an infinitely smooth curve. <laughs> freeway uh, as you can see obviously still plenty of traffic so really a great example of where autopilot shines so, so I'm gonna flick the lane change indicator to the right and now you'll see it's gonna start changing lanes on its own to the right and there it goes autopilot is saying confirm lane change into faster lane because this car in front of me is going under the speed limit mind you this is on Mad Max mode so it should be a fairly aggressive, here we go, and punching it, but there's a mini in my left. Wow, look at the car accelerate. Yep, that was impressive actually. And now we are comfortably cruising once again at 70. Um, so yeah, that actually worked as advertised. Well, eventually we did make it to Palo Alto. Our journey began in the charming little town of Tiburon where tranquility and boredom are the number one cause of death. Eventually, we made our way across the Golden Gate Bridge, 300 feet above the water's surface, where great whites call home. Then we traversed our way across the treacherous gridlock streets of San Francisco, narrowly avoiding catastrophe, before finally ending up on the blissful 280 freeway, skirting the edges of the ominous San Andreas Fault. Obviously, though, to wrap things up today, we do need a set of proper conclusions. And so for that, I've got a handy little cheat sheet. So let's see. Um, yeah, as I mentioned a couple times, the inputs of the steering, it's like a caffeinated 16-year-old learning how to drive. So that's definitely got to be smoothed out and improved. I do wish the car wouldn't hesitate so much when someone cuts you off. I feel like it's about a second or two delayed. Um, yeah, trying to wrestle control out of the steering wheel when you need to. It really takes a lot of force, and it's a bit unnerving, especially when it does finally release, then you just suddenly go darting the other way, so that's a bit weird. Oh yeah, obviously things like roundabouts, you know, traffic circles, definitely can't do those. Don't try to do that yourself, you will fail. And obviously, uh, stoplights and stop signs. We know that's coming eventually, probably gotta wait for the next version of autopilot hardware. Uh, pluses, really everything else. Look, there's no two ways to say this. This really is 
the best uh, semi-autonomous system in the world on the market today by far. Look, it's generally quite competent. It is supremely uh, able, if not truly capable in all situations all of the time. The important thing is it really instills a feeling of confidence and that's really the best you can say for a semi-autonomous system here in 2019. I mean, what more can you really ask for? Um, there really isn't any proper competitor to Tesla. Um, and look, above all, it's really remarkably easy to use. So anyway, well, it is time to wrap up today. Thank you so much for watching this, my first ever video produced for my podcast. Autonomous Cars with Mark Hogue, which if you haven't listened to yet, just Google Autonomous Cars Podcast. It really is the number one result. And of course, don't forget to follow me on all social media at Autonomous Hogue and on the web at AutonomousHogue.com. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, being a part of this, the one year anniversary of this podcast. All right, so stupidly while driving, I decided to try to engage one of the Easter eggs. It's called Cowbell, which if you look at the screen, so you, oh, it stopped. Yeah. Oh, thank God it stopped, finally. <laughs> well, it gave us a rainbow road that looked like some sort of digital acid trip, and then it started this ridiculous cowbell thing, mercifully, however, it is done. Right, Ooh. never mind. And just in case you're wondering, you do this, you pull this down here, and yeah, went to Cowbell. Oh, we should probably stop. Went to Cowbell. Uh, which is that. Oh, no. Gotta have more cowbell, and I'm not doing that. Um, what was the other one, actually? Ooh, I see Starman. Oh. Interesting. Okay, exit. We don't need that right now. We also have... Oh, I think it's being parked to use that one, which is probably a good thing. What's this? Oh wait, we're driving now. Okay, not doing any more now. Bye-bye.